In part one of our Hong Kong series, we extensively cover many of the amazing things to do and places to go in Hong Kong. This is everything I was able to fit in a full seven days. As a reminder, we cover the full itinerary in our one week Hong Kong itinerary. In part two, we get to sharing the juicy details of where you should eat in Hong Kong and also what hotel we stayed at and why I loved it. Okay, time to get to my favorite part of travel, which is food. When in Hong Kong, you'll want to have dim sum, but where should you go? One spot you should make the trek out to is... Sun Hing Restaurant. So you put your order in on this thing, but I don't know how they record these orders. The food just appears. <laughs> Pretty much have to grab them, tell them exactly what you want, they bring it in. Putting an order on paper doesn't really work. <laughs> Man, it's so crazy in here. Once you figure out that pointing at what you want is better, you can have all of your favorites, including turnip cake, beef balls, fish balls, special dumplings, golden mala cake, their famous egg custard bun, rice noodle rolls, and deep fried milk, which has a delicious creamy custard filling inside. So that is how local dim sum works in Hong Kong. Hong Kong style cafes or Ta Chan Tang are breakfast diners that are known for their comfort food and a fusion of East and West. What's unique about this one is their serious retro vibes where you can sit in a booth made from a cross-section cutout of a Hong Kong public light bus. You can't go wrong with their instant noodles with beef, vermicelli with shredded pork and preserved vegetables, a classic breakfast with red sausage and milk tea, and their thick French toast. Another Hong Kong style cafe you gotta try is Australia Dairy Company. The chaos of these restaurants makes this such an awesome experience. You're almost guaranteed to share a table with another group, and the seating isn't particularly comfortable, but you're really here for their steamed milk pudding. Egg and ham sandwich. This is the good stuff. So simple. It's so simple. Hong Kong style French toast and milk tea make it all worth it. Check out this French toast. Golden deliciousness. Milk pudding is so good, so why not visit another Hong Kong style cafe that I think does it better? It's just this silky smooth, but it's got a richer milk flavor. Check it out. Yishun Milk Company. Oh, I like this one. Really milky. It's hard to find milk pudding elsewhere, so take advantage. Now another super local thing you have to try is the herbal jelly. Gong Lei is a small shop that you can visit during your exploration of Central on the Hong Kong side that sells fresh cane juice and herbal jelly. Mm, that's good. <laughs> For Chinese desserts, head to Dei Mao Gun. This is overflowing. These are all of my favorites. So I had to get it all. All right, starting with the lime sesame. Completely handmade. Another classic is the Sago Mango. You got mango puree, mangoes, glutinous rice balls, Sago. Wow. And of course, we got glutinous rice balls black sesame inside. Lastly are the mango pillows with fresh mango chunks topped with fluffy whipped cream. Wow, this is good. The new bakery in town is Bakehouse. They have several locations all over the city and they always draw a huge crowd. All their baked goods are amazing, but what everyone is after are their egg tarts. They make them in batches and if they're sold out before your turn, you can pay first and pick them up at a later time. All right, Bakehouse, I hope you don't disappoint. Almost like a Portuguese, Still the nada, flaky, and a little burnt on the top. I hope this isn't overhyped. Mmm, it's not a pastel nada. It is an egg tart. Wow, worth the wait, worth the wait. Better to come here early in the day or else they're fully gone. The other hot egg tart spot is hashtag B. Inside will look like a traditional Chinese bakery, but people are going nuts for their egg tart with a twist of their Napoleon cake style crust and layer of caramel. Come here early and expect a lineup. This is Hong Kong's original one Michelin star dim sum specialist, and you'll find one inside the West Kowloon High Speed Rail Station. Every time I go to Tim Ho Wan, I always get the baked barbecue pork buns. I also love their deep fried sticky rice dumplings and rice roll with fried dough. This is a bomb. If you're looking for a hole in the wall joint that is a favorite amongst locals for its hearty bowl of wontons and egg noodle soup, look no further than Sek Gay wonton noodles and TST. The bowl we recommend getting is a three treasures noodle soup. So what are these three treasures? Well, we got beef here, giant fish ball, giant wontons, and in soup with egg noodles. Now this is a Hong Kong street food classic. 
this definitely gets the spot. A Hong Kong specialty is clay pot rice, and a neighborhood institution is Hingay with its 30 plus years of history. This is the spot to go and try cheap and authentic local cuisine. There's always a long line, but with so many storefronts, it moves pretty quickly. Start with a beer, deep fried oyster cake, and fresh razor clams, and of course, a mix of different clay pots. There's a huge selection of clay pots to choose from that includes chicken, pork, salted fish, Chinese sausage, and more on a bed of rice that turns crispy at the bottom. Simply drizzle it with soy sauce, mix it up. Let's have a chow down. Pack the flavor, all the textures, the savory soy sauce, the octopus, it all comes together really nicely. This is definitely worth the wait. At this point, you're starting to see a trend, right? Some of the best eateries are the ones that are unpretentious and no frills. Oi Man Sun is what you call a Tai Pai Dong, basically an open air food stall. They sure know how to put on a show as well, with their head chef working furiously with his walk and also taking time to pose to an onlooking crowd. Hey! To get into the queue, use this machine to get a ticket. The wait list gets long during prime dinner hours, but since they own so many different storefronts, the actual wait isn't that long. They are working fast. Now this is legit Tai Pai Dong. The fast pace and organized chaos is what makes a spot like this such a fascinating foodie experience. Gumby! We ended up ordering their famous potato and beef stir fry, stir fried clams in black bean and chili sauce, and a saute of vegetables, squid, shrimp, and cashews. Our beef is really good. <laughs> While you're in Sam Suipo, don't miss out this shop that specializes in street style rice noodle rolls or chong fun. They cut up the rolls into a bite size, drizzle it with an oyster sauce, peanut sauce, and hot sauce. It goes in a bag and you eat it with skewers that they give you. It can be a bit of a hot mess, but so, so part of the Hong Kong food experience. Legit street food. I know, you're probably shaking your head, but hear me out. I just so happened to be near IFC Mall after a photo shoot, and while yes, I love visiting when I'm in New York City, the last thing I wanted was a burger, but the reason why I'm here is for this guy, the mango bubble shake. Forget the burgers. Let's try this first. It's fake. Always popping, all right? <laughs> of course, we got the other usuals here. Got the cheese fries, just as good as New York. So I wanted to try something new. This is the white truffle burger, not the usual shack snack. Oh, the white truffle really comes through. <clears throat> got the fried onions, nice, fresh, patty, cheese, and that truffle sauce. It's crack. Craving for Hainanese chicken rice? Assam chicken rice specializes in precisely this. It's a comfort dish that has Hainanese chicken gently poached and stays ridiculously tender. It comes with a bowl of seasoned rice infused with chicken oil. Then you have a platter of different sauces, including dark soy, tangy red chili sauce, and my favorite, the ginger paste. And finally, you have a clear chicken soup. This hits the spot. A popular chain restaurant that you'll find all over Hong Kong is Tai Hing, which started specializing in barbecue roast meats, but is now a casual restaurant that serves many Hong Kong classics. One of the go-to dishes is their roasts on rice. I ordered the dish with three items, chicken, pork, and duck. If you can't decide where to eat, you can never go wrong with Tai Hing. If you're in the TSD area, look up frozen yogurt drool. You can make your own creations or get one of their delectable combos like this one with mango, almond crisps, mochi, and is drizzled with honey. If you know, you know. Mr. Softy is a vintage icon ice cream truck that has been around since the 1970s. Their soft serve is more milk flavored like the ones in Hokkaido, which is totally my jam. Their truck can be found all over the city, but they don't have a specific schedule. So if you hear the Blue Danube jingle or see them, make sure to grab a cone. If you're a sucker for bubble tea like me, jump at the chance to try different ones while you're in Hong Kong. There's so many different ones all over town, especially on the Kowloon side. During my trip, I didn't have any specific ones planned, but I was able to try different milk teas from Baroness and Hei Tea. And finally, how can you forget Tsui Wa? They're another iconic Hong Kong style cafe that is consistently good. My recommendation is go to the Hong Kong airport location right before security. There's nothing like having fishball noodles with milk tea as your send off. We stayed at page 148 on Austin Road, just off the main strip of Tsim Zai Zui or TST on the Kowloon side of Hong Kong and close to the Jordan MTR station as well. This is a boutique hotel that has a modern sensibility to it. It features plenty of sleek lines, a nice blend of textures, and a smart use of minimalism. 
When you enter the lobby, you'll see their in-house cafe with plenty of open seating space for dining or just hanging out. They also have a little shop of travel-related items. To the far end is the reception and where you check in, which is a breeze. This is the greenery signature room, which has a comfortable queen bed, and as a corner unit, it has views of the cricket club, Kowloon skyscrapers, and the silhouette of the mountains. At the entrance to the room is where you have your amenities. On one side, you'll find the retro phone, Marshall speaker, water, coffee, tea, and if you open up the mini fridge, additional drinks that are all free to take. On the other side is a place for your suitcase and where you'll find an air purifier, slippers, and a safe. The marble bathroom features plenty of counter space, a standing shower, and Appel's Australian amenities. One of the standout features of the hotel is that you can borrow a pocket Wi-Fi device for free so you can access the internet anywhere you go. They also serve an awesome breakfast menu, which I got to try since it was included with our stay. I definitely wouldn't hesitate to recommend page 148. So that's what a week could look like in Hong Kong. Keep in mind, I've been here before, so there's a couple things that I missed, but I think I did pretty good. Thanks for watching, and I hope you get to come to Hong Kong soon. And remember, we have a ton more details on the blog, so make sure to check out the links in the description down below. Till next time. This is the path less traveled. <laughs>